Hey, what's up guys? This is Slow Mo coming back at you with another video and today I'm going to review the suicide of Rachel Foster. A narrative driven suspense game developed by One on One Games and published by Daedalic Entertainment. Now the suicide of Rachel Foster initially released back in February 19th and it released on PC but its console release just came out on September 9th for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now my review is on the Xbox One X version. I did receive a review key from Daedalic Entertainment for the game shout out to them for providing it that's it the free review key will not influence my review whatsoever so all that out of the way let's get into it so the suicide of rachel foster takes place in the mountains of montana lewis and clark county to be exact where you take the role of nicole who was coming back to the town she grew up in after 10 years she's coming back to deal with the sale of her recently deceased father's hotel now en route to the hotel a massive snowstorm hits the entire county so massive was the snowstorm that Nicole is stranded at the hotel. So what went from a simple inspection of an abandoned property she's trying to sell turned into this prolonged nightmare for Nicole. No one would want to be stranded at a creepy, moldy, abandoned hotel all by themselves but this was especially a nightmare for Nicole who has some very painful memories of her time living there. Now you may have played these kind of games before. Most of these games feature a main protagonist who is somewhat of a mystery. You oftentimes don't even know who they are and they also have a major plot twist at the end. The Suicide of Rachel Foster is a bit different than the typical fare in this genre. It's very reminiscent to Gone Home and Firewatch where in Gone Home your entire playthrough is in one location and gone home it was the house your family moved into while you were away and Rachel Foster is the hotel your family ran and that you also grew up in. But also like Firewatch where you have a companion of sorts that you speak to through some electronic device who can provide advice, exposition of what's going on or potentially a love interest. That role is being provided in this game by Irving, a young female agent who's communicating to Nicole through one of the first cellular telephones ever built. Now over the course of the game, you uncover the mystery of the hotel, Nicole's family, and of course, Rachel Foster's suicide. Now one on one games explores some very sensitive topics in this game and to be clear, these topics focus on infidelity and its effects on the marriage as well as the children and also pedophilia. The latter may have some of you checking out immediately and I fully understand which is why I wanted to warn you that this game does involve those kind of subjects but for the developers part I think both topics are handled respectfully. Now does this story deliver with the same impact as Gone Home and Firewatch? Unfortunately no. Nicole's a good protagonist and I enjoyed her character growth throughout the story but I found her interactions with Irving very uneven. It seems they go from being too rude to one another to way too familiar and then back to rude again. The dialogue when there seems to be something else brewing there between the two of them is kind of awkward as well. Also I felt I could tell where the story was going very early on but that said there were a couple of plot twists that I was not expecting and I found them to be pleasant surprises. There also are a couple of segments of the game that I found to be just exceptional in terms of suspense. There is a part where the power goes out and you need to find your way to the generator to get the power back on. All the while you're using this old school Polaroid camera's flash to light your way. I found that to be extremely well done. Another great moment is when you're using an abandoned sound amplifier to track down strange sounds happening in the hotel. The subtle creepy sounds and random voices which were pretty much going on throughout the entirety of the game. I just kind of wish there were more moments like those moments throughout the entire experience. I kind of felt like that would have been a greater impact. The Suicide Rachel Foster can be completed in say three and a half hours tops which is great in my opinion. These kind of stories can have a better execution when they aren't padded by unnecessary filler and again I played the game on the Xbox One X so in regards to its performance I didn't experience any bugs or glitches which is fairly surprising for an indie title. Most indie titles are rife with those kind of things. But overall, overall, I think The Suicide of Rachel Foster is a decent game. My review score for The Suicide of Rachel Foster is a 7 out of 10. Not better than the best games in this genre, like What Remains of Ethan Finch or The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, but good enough that you won't feel like you wasted the last three to four hours of your life. And with two endings, they'll have you probably googling other gamers perspective on how the 
game turned out in the end and what their thoughts were on it. But you guys let me know what you think about the suicide rate for Foster. Is this a game you may want to try? Let me know in the comment section below. And also let me know if there are any other games that you want to see me review. Hit the like button if you liked the video, the dislike button if you didn't, and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more reviews from me in the future. Peace.